Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I cannot believe it is Thursday. That means the weekend is here. However, I wanted to slip this teaching in because this particular teaching deals with the voice of God. You know, everyone wants to hear the voice of God. And the voice of God is totally connected with the blessings of God. That is right. The blessings of God. I'm just looking here. There we go. Uh, the voice of God is never pushy. In other words, God does not uh, force his voice upon you or me. God's voice never pressurizes us. God's voice is always uh, temperate and it's tranquil. The voice of God is always peaceful. The voice of God never condemns. You know, when somebody wants to come to you and say, well, the Lord says this and that, and and it creates fear in you. The best is not to be open to receive that particular word. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. So a, a, a spirit of fear should not be part of any prophetic word that you receive from any person. It does not matter how much or how long they are a Christian, God's voice never puts fear in people. Now, somebody says, what about holy fear? Of course, holy fear is a different dimension. Holy fear is a conviction to do what is right. Holy fear is a conviction where you feel uncomfortable in not glorifying or doing what God has called you to do. That is different. Now, go with me to Deuteronomy. Let me bring it up on your screen here. And I'm just going to put that Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to look from, uh, let me see here. Uh, verse 1 to 2. All right. Let's look at that. Let me bring it up on your screen there. I'm just going to put it nicely up there for you to see. That's right. Then you can at least make a note of it. All right. Now, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Okay. It says, Now it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice, underline the word voice. See, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you then, what? High above all nations of the earth. See, God will set you above all the nations of the earth not tomorrow his word says today the bible uses the word today now in a message translation it says if you listen obediently to the voice of god in the new king james if you listen diligently to the voice of the lord your god the message bible if you listen obediently to the voice of god obediently the thing is, what do we do when we hear the voice of God? And you will find out a little bit more in a bit. And it says, uh, those who will obey, obey God wholeheartedly, all right, and his commandments, he says, I will place you on high above all the nations of the world. Now watch what it says. Are you ready? Are you ready? Verse 2. Verse 2. 
and all these blessings. Somebody say blessings. <laughs> okay. And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You see, the blessings of God is connected with the voice of God. Amen. The blessings of God is connected with the voice of God. He has a faithful a saint of the Lord again. Sharon, God bless you, my sis. So the voice of God is connected with the blessings of God. The more you obey the voice of God, the more you will cause blessings to be activated and blessings to be released to you. It is just like that. That's, that's the word of the Lord. And now we ask that big question. And by the way, this is definitely not going to be a long broadcast, okay? Now we ask ourselves, uh, how do I hear the voice of God? And so I want to just give you basically four keys, four keys, that is right. If you turn with me to Habakkuk, believe it or not, that is a book in the Bible. Habakkuk, chapter 2. Here are four keys in hearing the voice of God. Are you ready? Four keys in hearing the voice of God. Number one, he says, I will stand, verse 1, Habakkuk 2, verse 2, uh, Habakkuk 2, verse 1. I will stand uh, my watch and set myself on the rampart. Okay. And set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. There's about the voice. And what I will answer when I am corrected. And watch now verse 2. When the Lord answered, me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets that he may run or a herald may run who reads it. In a message Bible, it says, what's God going to say to my questions? I'm braced for the worst. I'm climbed to the lookout tower and scanned the horizon. I will wait to see what I will wait to see what God says. I will wait, I will see, I will listen. There's some keys. Okay. And then God answered, write this, what you see. So your first key in hearing the voice of God, write it down. Be quiet. Be quiet. Go in a place, a room, in your garden, Go and walk in the field, whatever. Be quiet. If the phone rings, switch off the phone. Jesus was in a desert 40 days, 40 nights without a mobile, without a cell phone, and the world still carried on. Be quiet. If there's anything that comes to your mind that says, I, I need to do this and I need to do that, then Write it down, write it down, write it down, or write it down, like a little to-do list. And if nothing further comes to your mind, then you keep quiet with your thoughts. And if a thought comes to your mind that says, oh, who do you think you are? You, you're just full of sin and you will not hear God's voice. Then you simply speak out and say, Any voice in my mind that do not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and has come in the flesh, if you do not acknowledge that, I command you, you be quiet, you be gone from my mind, for I bind you and I loose myself from such intimidating voices. That's, by the way, 1 John 4. That's how you test the spirits, okay? Any spirit that is of God will acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in a flesh. 
Now, once it's quiet, that's key number one. Key number two, are you ready? Tune to uh, or fix your eyes on your favorite Bible story. Key number two. There's four keys. We're already on key number two. Fix your eyes on your favorite Bible story. You see, you've got to tune your mind in with your heavenly antenna. As much as you take the dial of a radio and you tune in and you tune in to that right station, FM 90.1 or is it 89.7 as well, Christian music here in our area. You've got to be on the right frequency. And the frequency of God is His Word. And when you set your mind on your favorite Bible story, let's, for instance, say you face a situation in having to make a decision, should I cross over uh, to, uh, or should I move to another state or another city, or uh, should I make this decision with my job, or however. Get a favorite Bible story. A simple example is Jesus saying to his disciples, get into the boat and let's cross over to the other side. Now you fix your subconscious and your mind, your emotions, your thoughts on that Bible story. As you fix it on that, key number three, there's four. Key number three, are you ready? At that exact moment, you tune to spontaneity. Tune to spontaneity. What is spontaneity? That means you tune into God's voice. How? You open up yourself, ready to receive, because when God speaks, he speaks spontaneous. He speaks like a, a river that runs. Like Jesus said, rivers of living water will flow from your most inner being. So, tune to spontaneity. Tune to the voice of God. And number four, there's four keys. Remember I said this is going to be a short broadcast. Number four, are you ready? Write down the vision. Get a pen or a pencil, a notebook, notepaper, whatever, and start writing. And if it sounds too good to be true, do not question the spontaneity, the spontaneous thoughts that will come into your mind. It will just begin to run into your mind like a river of living water. It will just flow because God keeps speaking. The only reason people don't hear the voice of God is we as humans, we stop listening. God always speaks. God always has a word. It's just us as humans, we uh, kind of stop listening because we get so entangled in the things of the earth realm of the world because, you know, you've got to pay your rent, you've got to work, you've got to sometimes work overtime, you've got, to, you know, other commitments and, and so on and so forth. But make time to sit and listen to the voice of God. Now you write it down. It's called journaling, journaling. Write it down, write it down. The moment you question it, you stop writing because the moment you question the voice, if the voice says to you that you are my daughter or you are my son and, and I am pleased in you, even though you messed it up yesterday, God will still tell you today he is pleased with you. And that is, if your heart is more for the things of God instead of the things that are wrong. That's why David was called a man after God's own heart. Even though David committed adultery 
and he tried to repent, of course, of it, which he did repent, and he committed a murder, sending the husband of uh, the Bathsheba to the forefront to be killed, basically, on the battle lines. And uh, But he knew how to repent. Yet he was called a God, uh, God, I'm so caught up with God, he was called a man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. And likewise, you, you need to understand that just because you've made mistakes does not disqualify you from hearing the voice of God. Amen. Now, remember there, Habakkuk 2 verse 1, I will stand on my watch and set myself on the rampart. See, when you stand on God, you don't hear a noisy God. He's not going to warn everyone, I'm standing on God. You watch out, I'm over here. No, quiet, be quiet. Number two, he says that, and I will watch to see what he will say to me. That means fix your eyes on vision, on a Bible story. So you can tune in to the right frequency of heaven. If your eyes are fixed on the problem, you're going to hear and get a mixed message and you will think it's from God, but it's not necessary of God. It can either be the devil's voice or your fleshly voice. There are three voices, God's voice, Satan's voice, and your own human fleshly voice. God's voice always agrees with the word of God. The devil's voice is always against the voice. Uh, the, the, uh, the devil's voice is always against the word of God. And the human voice, your own flesh, your human voice always debates obedience. The human voice debates obedience. Well, I don't have to go to church after all, you know. I am really the church and yeah, 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 yeah. It's no wonder you have to try and impress people with your little sayings, even on Facebook, and yet you're not even committed to the body of Christ. Do not be deceived in these last days by anything. Be alert. Those who are connected and submitted to a local leadership and authority and as a pastor, a spiritual leader over them, that is God's pattern. Amen. So, you be quiet. Key number one. Key number two. Uh, hang on. First. Yes, that's right. Be quiet. That's the first key. The second key is fix your eyes on vision and your favorite Bible story. The third key is tune to spontaneity. In other words, when God speaks, He's going to just flow. Oh, mighty man of valor. Oh, but how can we be mighty? Gideon says, you see, he interrupted the voice of, the voice of God. And Gideon could not be used until he renewed his mind. It had to become the sword of Gideon and the sword of God, which is the word of God. Amen. The sword of Gideon and the sword of God. Until Gideon aligned himself with the word of God, he could not be used as a future leader to deliver the Israelites out of the demonic oppression of the Midian Midianites. Okay, let's move on. Then you journal. You journal. So what's the first key? Exactly. That's right. Be quiet. Any distractions, switch it off. If there's a dog uh, in your home and it keeps barking, put it in a different room. Do something. Okay? Switch off the phone. Be quiet. What's the second key? That's right. Fix your eyes on what? Fix your eyes on uh, your favorite Bible story. What's the third key? I cannot hear Tune to spontaneity. That's right. God will just speak and speak and do not interrupt God's voice. The moment you question the voice that you hear from God, you, you need to stop writing down. 
And then number four is, of course, your journal. So number one, be quiet. Number two, fix your eyes on your favorite Bible story. Number three, tune to spontaneity. Getting ready now to do number four, to journal, write down what the Lord is telling you. Then once you've done that, you hand that over to somebody who's trusted that you are connected with, that have at least read the New Testament. Let them read through it. And just uh, check it out with someone else who's spiritual. All right, it doesn't have to be your pastor, but that's that, that's great too, of course. But check it out with somebody just to read through, and that way, in a council of many victories, make sure, and um, just to make sure that you know what you've heard is lining up with the Word of God. That's key. If what you hear is just promoting you and promoting your flesh and promoting uh, materialistic things, there's a problem because God is spiritual. Amen and amen. 21 minutes already. May the Lord bless you and keep you and thank you for tuning in. Until next time, remember Jesus is Lord. Before I go, I want to bring this on your screen Okay, and let me see if I've got it here. Yes, if you would like to sow a seed, you see, I almost forgot about that. My mind is so wrapped with the things of the Lord. If you would like to sow a seed, sow it to AIM, uh, Box 485, Mount Vernon, Illinois, 62864. And your seed will be constantly watered. I broadcast just about every day. And if you don't hear me broadcasting here, I'm working at teachings, I'm counseling, or I'm teaching at nighttime. Uh, your seat is uh, multiplied all the time. And also, I want to end with this in saying, do not speak to the devil. You rebuke him, you bind him, you say, get behind me. Okay? So, when you want to hear God's voice, read, uh, uh, practice those four pointers, and remember Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, that as you obey the voice of the Lord your God, remember, these blessings will come upon you, and the blessing will overtake you, and you will be blessed when you come in and go out, and so on and so forth. Okay, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Bye now.